What's up guys, it's the Newbie Disc Coffee here bringing you another video. Today, I wanted to share a tip that I found useful while playing in the woods golf that is numerous around my hometown. I see a lot of beginners and more intermediate players really not use this to their advantage and I feel like so many people could find more success and their rounds on average are gonna be lowered, their scores are gonna be better, and it'll just be all around more fun to play in woods golf. So this tip, you know, it's really simple. Anyone can do it. And a lot of people may think I'm stupid or may call me out for clickbait or something, but it really is just disc selection. I see so many people throwing high-speed drivers, fairway drivers on shots that really don't require them and that the use of them is going to hurt you on average more than it'll help you gain. So what I took for an example, the first example I have of this video is hole two at my local course Blaine Disc Golf or Lincoln Park. And it, this is number two, hold, this is hole two, like I said. So right after you've come from a wide open, you know, distance driver, even fairway driver, if you got the arm for it, hole of hole one, you're coming into this super tight 20 foot, maybe 15 foot gap for a good 200 feet. And... I think a lot of people look at this and they're like, okay, I need to get past that stump and I need to park it right next to the hole. But it's just not the good mind. It's not a good mindset to go in when you're looking at this tee shot. You should think, okay, I'm going to lay up, just get it past all of this initial like fairway tunnel. And once I get to that stump, I'll have an easy up and then I can just take my tap in par. I'm going to get out of this hole with a par. I'm not going to take a bogey, a double bogey, triple bogey. When people start getting really aggressive on holes like this, your driver's going to nick a tree and it's just going to kick you really far. You may get the lucky kick down every once in a while, but still, do you really want to throw this 50 feet in front of you? Like it's still a tunnel shot. It's not going to change that much. So when I play this hole, I'm taking my bead in Luna, which I'll show in a second, really bead in so it'll flip up to flat. And as you can see, I'm just playing straight down the middle, not trying to play on the sides, which really aren't that open. I'm just going to play right up the middle with the putter and it's going to flip up. It doesn't even go down the right gap, but you know, I get lucky fade over and look at that. I'm right in the gap that I wanted to hit. So instead of trying to get a driver to get all the way to the basket, I just played a nice putter shot, easy little flip up, nice, smooth shot. I know a lot of people think that hitting gaps is just having good form, you know, having really good accuracy and only pros can do it. But if you really work on having certain discs that you can throw softer and really trust that you're not trying to rip on it and just causing that like rounding or that mistiming to come in. If you play a nice, smooth, easy little putter shot that you can put a nice little bit of power, but not too much, you might have more success than you think you would. And you might be able to hit a lot more lines than you normally would. And you can see this is how close I got. If I'm, I'm not the best putter, especially when I haven't been practicing, like I know I wasn't in this video, but you can see if I had thrown a driver, yeah, I maybe could have gotten over the stump or faded over and had like a 10 footer. But what's the worst case scenario here? I have a 45, 50 foot, maybe even a little further. It's hard to tell exactly on camera. Putt chance. If I miss it, it's going to land somewhere close and I'm just going to take my easy par. I think a lot of people look at that hole and even some of my buddies I play with, it just baffles me because you're throwing a disc that's going to kick so much further and pull in or bring in the chance for bogey or double bogey when you can just play something kind of easy down the middle and just take your nice par. I know it's not going to work for every single person. And as a beginner, you might not be able to throw your putter that far, but it's something to work towards. If you can start, if you can throw your putter halfway down that, that's half of the fairway you're now taking off and that's half the tunnel you have to hit. Yeah, it might not be what you want, but if you're not throwing the distance you you need to get to the basket with a putter or with like a mid-range, there's no reason to try to force a driver down there. It's not really going to make it that much better. And like, yeah, you might get one birdie, but consistently I can get a par on this hole where some of my friends that are throwing drivers and stuff are going to kick them more frequently and take a lot more bogeys on average. I think another example of this is hole eight on the same course. In this video, I actually didn't take my advice. You can see it's a 280 foot uphill shot. So I'm assuming it's playing more like probably like 315, like the B basket, but it's playing 320 ish, somewhere around that. It's another tight wooded fairway. You know, there's a little more 
like gap on the left that you could maybe hit and get lucky. But the right side is just treacherous. You do not want to go there. The left side has some openings. You might want to go there. But ideally, play something up the fairway, land safe, have a second open shot, maybe give a little bit of a run, and just take your par. You can see when, with like how I play it. I play it not correctly. I pull out a control driver and my undertaker. I'm thinking it's going to flip up flat. So we're going. Uh, okay, let's skip ahead. Okay, here we go. Throwing it. What do I do? Throw it straight up in the air. Doesn't flip over. Face to the left. If I would have thrown the same shot that I did on hole two with my Luna, I probably would be at least halfway to maybe three-fourths up the fairway on a straight line. I put it on the same hyzer angle probably, maybe a little more, but it would have flipped up flat, had a little fade at the end, but worst case scenario would have been left side of the fairway. I try to get greedy, try to get the birdie, and cut off the whole distance with a driver instead of playing a mid-range or a putter shot that I know I can just smooth up there for a nice 100-foot look, maybe even a little less if I get a really good throw. It's it's such a simple concept that a lot of people don't follow because everyone wants that birdie. And I understand I do it all the time too. I'm no perfect person. I, you know, I'm not a good player. I'm definitely not even close to a pro. And this is something that I'm really trying to implement into my game on holes that I have been trying to get when I really don't need to be pushing to get them. This is a hole that very few people I've been with have birdied, and I know it's, it's easily birdieable. There's a lot of people that could do it, but where are my skill level and where a lot of people's skill level is at, they're not going to hit this shot super consistent. So why not just play a nice, easy little putter mid-range shot that you know isn't going to have as much fade, will land in the middle of the fairway, and I'll give you a nice 100, maybe even less, like run at the basket, and then just take your tap and par. There's going to be holes on courses that you can attack for birdie and really go for it. But holes like this that punish you if you're not in the fairway are not the types of holes that you should go for. Another really good example I like to use when I'm talking about disc, disc selection is uh, this hole. I believe it's hole nine at Mossy Rock, which is on our local course. And, or no, sorry, hole eight. And this is a very steep downhill, just a dead straight shot. And I see people whip out drivers on it all the time. And I'm just so confused. It's a, I don't even know how far I should have looked it up. I'm a bad YouTuber, but I'd want to say it's like a 240 foot downhill shot. That plays so much shorter, maybe 300. Okay. I, I might be a little short handing it, but that plays so much shorter when you're throwing a downhill shot and people are whipping out these drivers, they're throwing them. And if they're not just like ripping on them and throwing them dead straight, into the ground they're either turning them over into the trees on the left or it's fading out early and going down the path to the left which gives you no look the left side is has no openings if you go far enough over and just pull out a putter pull out a mid-range throw something towards those two birch trees and let it just glide straight i a lot of times i'll throw my luna i think that's what i throw on this hole right now let's look but I'll throw my Luna because I know it's going to go straight with a little bit of fade at the end. But if I throw it well, it'll get up there. And you can see, I threw, I had the camera set up bad. But you can see, look at that. Throwing a putter, even a bad shot going left, went in front of the basket. And I'm left with like a 20-footer for my birdie. People are throwing drivers thinking they need to like rip and like ace it or park it next to the hole. When you can throw a putter or a mid-range, if you don't like throwing putters, just as well without the crazy amounts of fade you're going to have. Or without the like turning over because you're just going to throw it on a straight nice smooth just downhill shot throw it with the hillside kind of keep that angle let it fade down and let it float and just sit next to the basket i think people really look at holes that are further away or look at something like this and just think they need to whip out a distance driver or a fairway driver and just rip on it to park it but like a lot of shots like this you'll you'd see any pro player and i know that's not a good example but like even any like open that's just like a local pro or anyone that's just like good at the sport want to use a mid-range or a putter here because they can control it so much better than they can control a driver and with all of this being said i'm not saying don't throw drivers on holes you know any of these holes you can throw a driver on you could park this with a driver and you can say oh look i told you so you know you know nothing 
But I'm just saying, if you're finding that drivers are kicking too far or that you're not able to control them, you're not able to keep them on the fairway and you're just like ending up on the side all the time off the fairway, any of that, if you're finding that as a problem and you really want to lower your score or you really just want to see if playing or sorry, if throwing putters and mid ranges off tees more often than you are increases your score, just give it a chance. You know, it might work. I find that more often than not, if I can make it there with a putter or I feel comfortable throwing a putter and just taking a three, it's going to turn out better than me forcing a driver on a hole that really doesn't need one or shouldn't have one. It just can save you from those unnecessary kicks, those awkward just like spots of being in trees or being in like thorns. And it really, I think people underestimate how well you can throw putters and how much accuracy you have throwing a putter over throwing a driver with the low speed fade and stuff that you can control on a stable to straight flying putter. Well, that's all I got. Um, sorry if this wasn't something that you enjoyed or sorry if this is something that you already knew and you thought this was going to be some new tip. But I just think a lot of people don't utilize putters and mid ranges as well as they should have, especially in woods golf when it can help your score so much. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, comment if you guys think this is stupid, if you guys liked this tip, if you want maybe some more tips from me. Tell me if you guys kind of use this uh, thought process when you're playing on wooded courses or even if you're playing in open courses. And just have a good New Year's. Peace.